So I want to talk to you about teaching physics as a non-specialist. As an introduction, I'm Yannin Yestromfield. I am curriculum team leader of science at Sackville School, which is a large comprehensive school in West Sussex. My background, I have a GCSE in combined science. I have an A-level in biology, but I did combine that with English literature, sociology and AS level dance and a degree in zoology. Therefore, I can pretty much say that I am a non-specialist when it comes to physics. With the shortage of teachers in science, non-specialists teaching out of their specialist area within science is fairly common. In fact, some of these teachers don't even have a specialism in science. What I want to talk about today is specifically non-specialist teaching in physics. However, much of what I'm going to say does apply to non-specialisms in biology and chemistry as well. So what problems have I found in teaching physics? Background information and anecdotes. So from the syllabus in biology, drugs need to be tested to prevent unknown side effects. So for example, when thalidomide was prescribed in the 1960s, is my hook into the student's engagement in that particular curriculum statement, and it keeps them interested and the knowledge that science is linked to real life. I know a lot of background information as far as biology goes. I was reading an article in BBC Wildlife only yesterday about how medicines used for chemotherapy originally came from sponges in the sea. I don't have that same kind of background because I spend most of my time reading BBC Wildlife and not necessarily watching Stargazing Live. In our schemes of work, we do have some background inf uh, information for those non-specialists to be able to use. So for example, an electromagnet can be turned on and off, I use the video of James Bond from The Spy Who Loved Me, where he picks up Jaws with the electromagnet and then turns it off and drops him into a pool of sharks. It's getting a little dated at the moment, but it does pique the interest of those Key Stage 3 students. Later on in Key Stage 4, Alexander Litvanenko can be used in radiation in order to teach the difference between alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Now, all of these things within the scheme of work make it much easier for a non-specialist to be able to really bring science alive and physics alive for those students, which, as we know, they have more engagement. They're going to be able to remember more and retrieve more when it comes to those exams. The maths. Now, the maths has increased overall. However, the maths is also different from subject to subject. So, for example, in biology, really, we use maths for our one and only equation, which is the magnification equation, percentages, percentage change, surface area to volume ratio, and sometimes a little bit of standard form. Obviously, in physics, there is a lot of use of equations. This is something that we as biologists are not particularly used to if we're teaching in that area. So what problems does that bring up? Well, rearranging equations, how should it be done? Now, I'm not going to open the whole can of worms as to whether there should be formula triangles used or not. The point really here is it should be used consistently, whichever approach is used across the department. There is no point in a teacher teaching triangle formula in year nine and the teacher in year 10 then teaching those students how to rearrange. You're increasing their cognitive load and therefore reducing the amount of time they actually get to practice in applying that equation to what they need uh, to be doing. How do the students approach the equation questions? When they look at it and it's a whole mess of numbers and words, how do they put that together to come out with a final answer? There are loads of acronyms if you search the web for them, FIFA being one of them. Write out the formula first, then insert the numbers, then fine tune what you've written down and finally answer. That's just one way through. The point is, again, in order to reduce the cognitive load during those lessons, consistency 
is the key here. Calculator skills are also really important. As physicists, you will use those calculator skills a lot more often than we might use them in biology. Calculators have changed since we were at school. And so an up to date working knowledge of how those calculators work is absolutely essential. We have a little guide on our shared drive, which we can dip into when we need to. And often we have CPD during our teaching and learning meetings on the different functions of how to use the calculator. This links very much in with confidence in maths. I can say with certainty that our biology department is that department which has the least confidence in teaching the maths part of the science course. In order to gain confidence, there needs to be regular updates and regular CPD. So the question is, is there consistency in the maths in your science faculty? Obviously, this can be extended to is there consistency between your maths faculty and your science faculty, but that's a whole different of a talk. Moving onwards, key definitions. I can rattle off homeostasis is the maintenance of an internal environment to provide optimal conditions off the top of my head. That's a two mark answer. It's come up already um, and it's likely to come up again. What I can't do is the same for the keywords and terms in physics. So first up, I need to know what keywords the students need to be sure of, which ones come up that they need to know specific definitions for, either to work out questions with it or actually write down the definitions. When do you want to ensure that these are correct? When do we want to teach them? I would suggest we generally want to teach things as early as possible to get as much reinforcement as possible. And in key stage three, as we know, people do very often teach out of their specialist area. So how do you ensure consistency across those key words? In our faculty, we're aiming to implement a glossary sheet at the beginning of each key stage three topic as part of our summer work this year in order that all staff, no matter what their specialism, can be teaching the correct definitions when they are teaching those topics. Lastly then, what do I teach to my set three? Do you teach everything to all students? Again, this is a contentious issue. Some people think that you should teach everything to all of them. A lot of people believe that if you have a lower set, it is better to teach the bits that are more likely to come up and teach them well. So they have a really good understanding of those solid basics. How do I know what those basics are in physics? I am constantly surprised with the level at which they need to know certain topics. So in conclusion, just have a think about whether your faculty has extra background hints for your non-specialist engagement of their classes. Coordinated approach to teaching maths. Find key definitions and what's appropriate for which level of student. When I'm teaching physics as a non-specialist, often I think I'm teaching it better because I'm really thinking about my plan and how to get it across being the, that the information is slightly more unfamiliar. What I really want to be doing, however, is making sure that I'm teaching consistently so that those students have a consistent approach and therefore will achieve more highly. Thank you very much for listening.